What's up, people? How's it going? Welcome back. Alright, we have our work cut out for us. We need to go into the Circle Tower and clear it of demons and abominations and what have you. You know, these things that have sprung up with the mages. And I don't know how that happened. I mean, this stuff never happens where mages are involved, right? Right? Now, we're... we're going to get into the meat of the Dragon Age franchise right here. This is this is the be-all, end-all of Dragon Age. The one central focal theme of everything that happens, essentially, in this game world involves, you know, um, the mages. Uh, it's the Templars versus mages theme, or the pro-mage, anti-mage theme. And, you know, how do you feel about that? If... if <laughs> If you didn't have this, uh, you, you honestly wouldn't have the story that they've created here, and it, and it becomes this hot debate, okay? And this debate isn't going to be ended here, so so my my input is nothing but uh, just a little more dust in the wind of all the things that have been said about this over time. If you go look on Dragon Age forums and stuff, this is spilled over into heated arguments, you know? Who sides with and who sides against, and who wants to justify the mages, and who wants to condemn them, and this and that, and blah, 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 and... You know, I can sit here and go, you know, I side with the Templars in my thinking because all I see when you're dealing with mages is things ending badly. But I also rationalize in my own mind, what if I fell in love with a mage? How would I feel about it then? My wife was a mage, and the honest answer would be to exterminate mages, which would leave Dragon Age without a story, so we can't have that. But let's say you did, then I would have to exterminate my wife, and then I, I mean, you know, these dilemmas, and I say, wow, what an epic controversy. What an epic moral line that you have to draw where, you know, how big or small is the gray area there? You know, between black and white, between I saying I'm for or against, there's always this and but thrown in there. It's, it's what makes it amazing. I mean, they came up with this scenario to build this franchise around that's just, oh, the ripple effect. I mean, it carries over into everything, all the politics, all the, all the everything in the game. And it's just amazing. Just amazing, in my opinion. All right. And so, uh, anyway, I, like I say, that debate wouldn't, wouldn't end here. And, and I would love to go around the block with all of you guys a thousand times about the pros and cons of mages and this and that and blah, blah, blah. I can say for the mages that, um, they would be on the losing end of just about every argument because where they're involved, bad things happen to people who don't deserve it. Well, mages don't deserve it. Well, I'll tell you what, I will sacrifice the one to save the thousand. Sorry. What if your wife was a mage? Well, damn it, don't bring that up because that makes it hard, you know. But like I say, that's 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 where it just really gets good because when you can carry a game story over into the real world and have real life moral dilemmas, where you say, you know, I'm I'm for this or against that, and I feel this way. But if it's that case, and you have to deal with the individual, is what it comes down to. Uh, myself and uh, Gunthermation. A, a good buddy of mine, okay, he, he runs a channel. He has really, really good stuff, too. He does a lot of horror games. But uh, we had a, a long discussion on one of these videos in, in the comment section. We were going back and forth on it, and it was like, you know, yeah, there's always the if and but thing, you know? I mean, I, I totally agree with that, except in this case. And then I would always say that, except over here, I'm thinking this. And, you know, there's there's just no cut and dry. And, you know, when it comes down to it, my opinion and if, if I were to sum it up, which is really hard to do because, like you say, there's always exceptions um, to these things. But I would say overall, I would say almost an extermination of the, of the mages would s seriously solve... Um, it would create one problem and solve 99 problems. So there you go. And the, the one problem it would create is i got to feel guilty about it for a minute. But then, bottom line, you have peace without all the bad things that, that magic inevitably brings about in the hands of men. Because, you know, it's one thing, well, that person can't help they were born a mage. Well, a cockroach can't help it was born a cockroach either, but you still step on it. Okay, if that sounds like a bad analogy, well, that's, that's kind of true. All right, but on, on the same token, um, that mage may not be able to help the way it was born, but it has decisions to make. Well, it's in a constant fight um, with itself as far as giving in to demons. Well, okay, then that sounds like war to me. All right, when war spills over into society and innocents begin to die... Well, you need to cut it off. You, somebody needs to win, and you need to end that war, you know. And so that this, that usually comes down to one side losing or the other. If magic wins, everybody else dies. Okay, that's the losing proposition. Or if you exterminate magic, then you don't have this problem anymore. So it, it is the cause. It, magic isn't just a, a symptom. It's not a result. It's actually the cause, all right, for all this stuff. 
and dealing with mages and trying to find some guideline on how to deal with them is is the kind of oh would you say that that closet with no space that the that the templars have been stuck in trying to deal with mages because they're kind of cornered they can't do this but they can't do that the right thing is this but it seems bad so they don't do that but then it leads to this and then the mages eventually break loose and they do crap like what we're seeing right here anyway all right i i I could go on and on like everyone else has for the years since Origins first came out, is this is this debate here. But uh, anyone wants to talk about it, hey, that comment section is wide open. Keep it clean, guys. Keep it civil. But uh, y'all are welcome to put in your two cents. And, uh, yeah, we can uh, we can bang heads on that. It's, it's, it's great fun. Great fun, as long as you keep it civil. But, uh, all right, this is what I'm doing here. I've babbled on long enough about that. Um... This is summoning sciences, okay? I've, I've picked up a few scraps of paper along the way. Um, there were a couple here in the library, and once you get them together, you get the instructions. I just went to my menu a minute ago to show you those. And it gives you a specific order that you need to activate or touch these particular um, items that are kind of strewn around here. You, you go to the summoning font, and you go touch this, go touch that, blah, blah, blah. And then you eventually go to this uh, the first little summoning thing, and it summons like a little spirit nug. He dies, you get a little random gem from him. And then when you uh, summon the second one, check out this happens. Now this is key. Is this guy right here? I think he's called a trickster whim. I believe is what is, is what that guy is referred to as. He will appear later. And uh, he will also drop a unique item right later. And that won't happen unless you do this right here. So this is actually a really good idea. Plus we're going to get another unique item here shortly. Once we get this last summon, and this this third one, this takes a minute. You have to activate like half a dozen different things. But uh, if you don't follow the instructions um, precisely, then uh, you take damage. I think you get an actual injury that you have to use an injury kit to uh, to cure. Uh, maybe that's just on Nightmare. I'm not sure if that's on every difficulty. But uh, either way, you're going to take damage. But I, I believe on this difficulty, you actually get a, a permanent injury that you need to use an injury kit to get rid of. So, anyway, what I did is I, is I just quickly wrote down all these little things so I could just run through these things and show you guys. But they're written on the instructions. You go to quest-related stuff, and there's a little note called Summoning Sciences, and it'll tell you the exact order to uh, touch all these things in. And I believe that's pretty much it. Alright, there we go. A Fade Rifter. I guess this is like a uh, dark spawn bear? Kind of? It's nasty what they do to animals. Poor guy. Anyway, we get these uh, charged mitts. A lot to do extra electricity damage. I'll be giving those to Morgan and give her some electricity spells to play with at some point in time. Alright. And that's it for this floor. Got summoning sciences. Got to uh, vent a little bit on the uh, old uh, Mage Templar debate. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Remember to use the comment section below. If you want to catch up on the rest of the Let's Play up to this point, click the top box. If you want to catch all my videos, click the bottom box, other video playlists. And if you want to subscribe and support the Ninja Flips, hit that button right there over my head. And uh, like I said, thanks for watching. And uh, y'all take care. Bye-bye.